This is a 1947-48 automotive car radio, AM only of course, and this comes out of a truck that a friend of mine purchased and is restoring. Right out of the gate, the thing with restoring one of these, at least for me, is the vibrator. Uh, how's the vibrator? Does it run? Uh, how does it run? You know, is it bad? And the deal is, if you're not familiar with these, the vibrator is basically like a primitive inverter. It's a mechanical switching device that the low voltage is fed into a transformer and stepped up for the tube plates. So I believe this is a 6 volt radio even though he told me that the truck has been converted to 12 volts which means the vibrator could be even more damaged and what the vibrator does is it steps up the the uh, via converting the 6 volts DC into AC into a transformer it comes up to your 200 volt plate voltage that's how they get the high plate voltage for the tube so if the vibrator is dead and I know there's solid state replacements and you can make one with FETs and and one in transistors and all that stuff but uh, is it 2, 2 in 3005 I believe you can make sort of a primitive oscillator feedback thingy anyway enough about my love for the vibrator let's dig in and see if the vibrator still stimulates so again uh, 19 late 1940s I guess it would be a, a Dodge truck I don't know I'm not good with old cars but it's a Mopar uh, model 602 and it's in pretty rough shape every buttons are all stuck and don't move uh, nothing seems to really do anything here I guess that's the volume tuning doesn't do anything it's in Sam's 1920 let's take a look at that a special thank you to to who got me this I won't name drop it because then everybody will be hitting on you for schematics but uh, you, you saved me countless hours digging around in the garage for a very early Sam's so let's take a look at the schematic here and he said it was 12 volts positive ground I don't know about that because if you look at this you have your incoming power through a choke, then your power switch, then it comes to your lamp here, then to your heaters. It also comes over here, if you follow it, to this point, and this is a field coil speaker. So we don't need that for testing, and it looks like it simply applies 6 volts here. But yeah, is it 6 volt, or is it 12 volt? Because... If this goes to the heaters, these are all 6-volt tubes, Loctals. I believe these are 6-volt tubes. Um, I have plenty of Loctals, but I don't like them because the sockets suck, especially on something that is this corroded. You know, why am I talking so much? Because you need to do your research before you dig in and fix anything. So... I'm going to assume this is 6 volts. I don't know if it's negative or positive ground. I don't know if that matters because here's the vibrator right here. And you can see how it's wired. It's got what that's a snubber resistor. So that resistor is important and this 004 capacitor are important. If any one either one of those is bad, it will burn the contacts in this thing. Looks like we have a non-heated rectifier. And let's see, what is our plate voltage here? So we want to know what pin 2 of the 7C5 is. So here we go, vibrator transformer. Um, 
primary is 5.8 volts, secondary is 540 volts, center tapped. So that confirms this is a 6 volt radio, and that would put our, uh, now let's see, what's where they have the vibrator. So the vibrator is 6.3 6 volts too, so it's definitely a 6.3 volt radio. And probably about 250 volts on the secondary, DC. Yeah, not so you could read it, but here's the voltage chart, and it looks like it's about 220 volts DC. Okay. Chrysler Corp Parts Division. I actually say Detroit, Michigan. Wow, this is in rough shape. This is like something you, we would find out in the desert and try and resurrect. So here's the tuning Scoily Spoimler. It's just completely frozen. Wow. Pushing on that as hard as I can. Now, well, like I said, the vibrator is kind of key. I have to have a good vibrator or there's no joy. Let's see here. So this looks like the power wire, correct? This must be that spark arrestor thing. All right, let me let me look at this. Loctals. Crappy. Loctals. Here we go. January 27th, 1948. Video opening this that way we get all the falling crust. So do I need to get these out? I got that off. I need to get these out. This filthy ass thing is absolutely oh. from a car that was under water. Oh, jeez. Look at the rust. Yeah, the odds of the vibrator working in this are pretty damn low. So we have two wires here. Look at the sockets. Look at how corroded the pins are. I think this is going to be a no-go. Recapping this would sure, certainly be easy. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven caps. Eight caps. So it would certainly be a quick and easy... Did I need to take those screws out or do those screws hold the chassis into the can? Hey, Jason JJ Cruz. You can see a couple capacitors in here. These are probably the, for the vibrator. Um, yeah, not a lot of hope for this. I mean, yeah, maybe we can resurrect it and see if we can just make it work. But having something with tube sockets like this where they're just all completely... I mean, you could restore this if you really... But this would be a, like a totally, completely strip the whole thing. Put it in that uh, rust remover. Uh, let it soak. Get it all cleaned up. You know, this, this is like a full chassis stripped down frame off restoration to do this type of thing could be done but i i don't i think i see these pop up on ebay occasionally so yeah not so there's a peak for you fellow vibrator lovers and is that a also dated 48 in this thing it's a transformer and there are some capacitors down underneath inside this thing you can see them from the bottom but 
how you access them. So let's see if it vibrates. We're not going to run it for long. These are lithium iron phosphate cells. They're 25 amps. Uh, so we'll do two of them, which is six volts. Oh. What was making a... Ooh. Oh, wow. Ooh, somebody is having a good time right now. Okay. Uh, we... Okay, we really don't want to run that uh, unless we know for sure that the, uh, what's that stuff called, evapo-rust? Because I'm getting real sick of this crap. Maybe I should have him buy a thing of evapo-rust and we'll soak this, take this can off the outside. But the, the, the crappy tube sockets is what what worries me these things already as they are have a hard enough time making contact with these little tiny pins and when they're this corroded but i would actually say there's possibly hope here with the vibrator running here's the vibrator box so i'm not quite sure what it looks like this is the wire coming out going to the filter capacitor so let's uh, let's see if we get any voltage there. Nothing. That's kind of odd. That rectifier. What was that? Zero something. Zero Z four. Wonder how this works. I wonder how a filament a tube without a filament works it looks like we should have ac voltage high voltage on pin three and five and then whatever pin that is you can't read it that goes to the filter that's where i was measuring it let's check three and five well it appears i have what 150 millivolts on three just check all of them. Zero, 150 millivolts, uh, zero, so something, uh, Mr. Vibrator is, is, is buzzing, but the points are not making contact, which is probably no surprise. Oh, look at the light still works. So, who knows? Sort of wish I could get to the bottom of this to do some voltage measurements, but you can't. It's uh, kind of all sealed in there. Sometimes you can cut them open and clean the contacts, but I don't want to go there with this. It's not mine. It's got to be semi-reliable. Looking at the current draw, uh, it's at 1.65 amps, and that's going to be the filaments and the light bulb. Uh, if we had a if we had a shorted capacitor or something, we would see severely high current draw. Could be an open transformer, but I kind of doubt that. I think the vibrator is not the points are not making contact anymore. So you can see the way it works is it's got uh, basically the motor portion, which this is the six volt line coming in right here, right? on the right side 
So it goes through the coil, which attracts the thing. When it when it attracts it magnetically, it turns off, and then it just starts cycling. Uh, and it's supposed to got these two points, and it's supposed to alternately ground those. See, it's got six volts on the center tap here, and it's supposed to alternately ground those. Uh, effectively square waving this transformer positive and negative or, or side to side. Here's what I think I'm going to do which is sort of a no-no. I'm going to go down to three volts. And it actually still runs at three volts. And then what I'll do is I'll pull it out. See if I can. Okay. Now, um, this is a little bit. I should really just get a light bulb and do this, but I'm basically just going to ground these one at a time through the amp meter and see. So yeah, we got power there. Yeah, we got power there. Those two are probably the transformer. Yeah, so it's not the transformer. Um, it's definitely the vibrator. So not good. The other test we can do here is to look at the current draw of the entire radio with the vibrator out and then stick the vibrator in and uh, so uh, no vibrator vibrator so like I said, the, the vibrator, the contacts are just not working. So even though it sounds happy, it's not reaching a climax. So I don't know. I don't know. If this radio was in nice shape, I might try and do something. But since it's such a rusty, crusty thing, maybe it's time to look for a better uh, example on eBay. Um, maybe we could resurrect it. We could put... Uh, just pull the vibrator out and put B voltage into it and see if it yeah, too bad maybe someone ran it on 12 volts maybe they ran it on 12 volts with the the capacitor and resistor bad if you run it with a bad capacitor and resistor you just see fire come out of the points it has to have that that capacitor and resistor be good Wow. I mean, I guess it could be done, but it would require a level of desperation that I certainly don't have. Even this thing is just like, this is plastic. I think it's plastic. Maybe maybe it is glass, but man, it's it's like the hell happened to this car? Did this thing sit in a lake or what? I mean, usually, you know, if a vehicle's taken even even a barn find wouldn't really look like this, would it? Unless the roof was gone on the barn for fifty years. And th th these are kind of in the middle of the vehicle, right? Uh, 
rusted. So I see how this works. This is a clutch. There's supposed to be, it's totally missing. There's supposed to be clutch material in here. Uh, and when you turn this, it's a, it's a slip point. But the clutch material is all gone. And, he, and this is the spring loading for it. You'd have to take this apart and just put, I don't know, what felt. Could probably put one of those things in there that they sell that go on the bottom of furniture to keep it from scratching your floor. Those little felt, round felt pads. One side is sticky. Could probably put one of those in there and then you'd have your clutch. Look at this capacitor here. It's just totally diocrinculating. I might uh, might try and resurrect this. Just let's see if we can make it play again. I just think he could find a better specimen. I mean, this is not that rare of a radio. Yeah, you might have to cough up a couple hundred bucks to get one that's not as rusty. See if I can blow it apart. Geez, that's bad. This stuff here is pretty wicked as far as like a solvent. Uh, you know penetrating oil goes I'm gonna this will dissolve rubber and stuff so I'm gonna very kinda very gently kinda it won't hurt metal but I'm just gonna kinda hose this thing down let it sit for a while and that made real short work of this So, very nice. I've gone through and greased and cleaned this whole mechanism and if you can believe that I actually got it all working. It's all working and I, I made a mistake earlier with what I said about this clutch thing. That Because these buttons were stuck in and rusted it was pushing this plate down and you can see when I push a button see how it retracts that so it can spin the thing when you push a button find one here see that so it's got to be able to spin it without the friction so this is working now so mechanically I've, I've got it this whole thing working if you can believe that it's still really corroded but I really took my time and scraped all the rust off and then greased it with some kind of generic white grease and uh, look at this remember all of these were frozen before now they all work perfect so we're getting there and I might try and build a solid state vibrator for this just to do it for the video well, maybe we'll test the tubes all right, real quick, let's go through and test a bunch of these tubes. Okay, that one's good. That's a 7A7. Okay, let's see. That one's good. No problem. So this is a 7Q7, 7Q7. This might not. This might not test real strong. Let me double check my settings. 
Okay, this is the second part. So the one half of it looks weak, but I don't know. 77. Who? I might have done something wrong there. Well, you could just let this go in the background and just really just make everybody watching the video angry. A little Rand Paul and Peter Schiff, you know, what could go wrong? This tube is good. The only one I got to do is the audio output tube. Audio output tube. Audio output tube looks okay. Oh, nice. Spray it everywhere but where it needs to go. Anyway, this is going to be the first test. This is where we're going to sort of try and validate whether this thing is worthy of building a solid state vibrator for or not. Now, you can buy solid state vibrators and there's a bunch of guys that talk about them online, but no one gives you a schematic and I'm not good at designing stuff. Uh, there is one schematic with a guy who may who has one of these made out of two 2N3055 transistors and four resistors. And I'm not quite sure how that works, but I could definitely build that one and we could try it. Now we know the tubes are good. The mechanism has all been cleaned and greased for, for whatever that's worth. I mean, it's, it's working now. Um, this thing's in rough shape. So here's the here's the plan. This little thing, you buy these little Chinese things, they're cheap. They they go from like uh they're adjustable, they go from 12 volts to 200 or 250. But the problem with these is they're exceptionally noisy and they just wipe out all but the strongest stations. So this is, is not going to work as a permanent solution. Plus this thing needs to run on 6 volts because all the filaments are 6 volts. So I mean I guess you could get creative and wire 2 in series and 2 in series and then one with a resistor. If you wanted to make it 12 volts, which is a thought. You could also possibly change these to the 14 series tube. This is like a... 7A7, you could change that to a 14A7. 7C7, you could change that to a 14. That would go up to the higher voltage. Um, a lot of clip leads. We've got our batteries here. We're going to use two of them for the filaments and four of them for this thing. So let me start getting it set up. We know the tubes are good. We know the sockets are probably bad. Uh, definitely all these capacitors are bad without a doubt the capacitors are bad 
but uh, hopefully they're good enough to so we can just test it and make sure none of these coils are open. I got this hooked up. I do not have the filaments hooked up yet. And I got this at maximum and I hooked this up and boy it I think we got a short here somewhere or that capacitor needs to be reformed because this thing starts squealing and the voltage doesn't even go up much past 100. Listen. I guess that's the capacitor reforming. One thing about these cheap clip leads is they really limit current. Yeah, look at that. Look at it creeping up like that. Ooh, I smell something burning. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's this one right here. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah, it must be the capacitor reforming. Okay, well that should be good enough. Yeah, now when I hook it up, it goes straight up to 200 and something volts and doesn't cry too bad. Okay, let's power the filaments up and get the speaker hooked up. The filaments are powered up. Volumes at maximum. Here we go. B plus. Ooh. So all those little birdie things, wow, 273 volts, that ought to get the party started. All those are noise from this thing, but let me get an antenna and see if we can get anything. Come on, KNX, show me who's daddy. Clipped a little antenna on there, and this wire is getting hot. And the first thing it says when it's resurrected is, your credit sucks, you need to change your spending habits. There we go. Van Nuys in 63 in Newport Beach at 947. The end is inevitable, Maverick. You're kind of set it for extinction. Maybe so, sir. 
Not today. Top Gun Maverick didn't have the biggest debut of any movie this year, but it stayed in theater so long and people kept going back to see it that it is the highest earning film of 2022. It came out 36 years after the first uh, Top Gun. It, uh, it's taken an almost a billion and a half dollars around the globe, including more than 700 million in North America. Closest rival is the uh, Black Panther sequel, Wakanda Forever, with about 420 million bucks in domestic sales. That's followed by Dr. Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and Jurassic World Dominion. Just days after former Mayor Eric Garcetti signed an order to have the Hollywood sign lit up at night, Chris Eden says the plan's dropped by L.A.'s new mayor. Mayor Bass's decision comes before Mayor Garcetti's could even take effect. And that sits just fine. James Schwartz, Vice President of the Hollywood Land Homeowners It's not lit for obvious reasons, because of public safety for the residents and also safety of the animals. This is a very high fire severity zone. Schwartz says this isn't the only issue worrying local residents. We have substantial structure that would never be approved today. Almost on every street, every parked car prevents two-way traffic. That's how near... It's working. That wire is hot. But you can see what I mean by this. So, I take everything back I said about the tube sockets. Apparently, they're good. You saw me testing them there. This is working with all original capacitors right now. So, really, all we got wrong is the vibrator and the capacitors. If we could sort those two things out, and then, of course, the whole front of it needs to be re-chrome plated, but I'm not going to do that. The guy who's restoring the truck, he can have that done. I'm sure he'll probably have some of these buttons pull off. It's how you set it. You pull the button off and then you, you dial this in. Um, the guy who's... I wonder... Let's see, I can't get enough of a grip on it. Wanted to see what stations it was set to. I can't do it. Gracias, Miguel. Ahora tenemos una pregunta de Ramón. Y dice, una vez que haya firmado con ustedes, ¿qué tan rápido estarían trabajando en mi caso? Ramón, es una muy buena pregunta. Y la respuesta es... Muy bueno. Una vez que... Down after the novelty wore off, McGinnis also says there's a lot of room to grow. Billion dollar category in a 1.4 trillion dollar addressable market. A market that the animal meat protein industry has been fighting to defend. They're highly coordinated. This plant-based meat category. Calling it processed or faux. He says plant-based meat has come a long way in a short time, moving well beyond the veggie burger of old. I'm Bloomberg Steve Potus. Windows Money Desk, KNX News, 97.1 FM. Hey, it doesn't it doesn't work bad for being all original, all original capacitors, all original everything with just a one foot clip lead as an antenna. No alignment. I mean, imagine what this thing, how this thing would perform if it was fully woke. It would be easy to, to do this. I mean, what do we got? Well, we should do the electrolytic too, but I think we got two in there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Got like 12 capacitors. Begin the new year is on January 3rd when they will have those, those votes take place. Uh, it would be a... Uh, monumental uh, act of stupidity if they if the republicans below that when they have all right we're going to do some recapping on this radio 
And I think what I'm going to do is break this into two parts. I don't like to do two part videos, but we'll cover the vibrator in part two. But we'll get the radio working right and um, working off of a filament transformer. We'll feed 6.3 volts from a filament transformer backwards. So, uh, yeah, we'll start the recapping. I'm going to use a combination of disc capacitors and uh, film, just a bunch of surplus stuff that's good quality. And we'll check them as we take them out. Believe it or not, this one is right on spec. This is an 007, that's what it's measuring. I'm getting a full eye opening, and there's no leakage. If I go over here to leakage, and then I crank the voltage up here. There's no leakage even at 500 volts. What? These paper capacitors are good? What? All the capacitors have been replaced. Here's a collection of old ones. I did test them. Uh, there was only one or two that was kind of leaky. These were in really good shape for the condition of this thing, looking like it had been wet and that. Uh, these are inductors that couple the antenna into the RF amp, so these are not capacitors. I replaced everything. I used a lot of disk capacitors in the non-critical, just kind of bypass circuits. Um, there really are these are these postage stamp domino ones these are all mica they should be good and th this is like this right here is a tone capacitor this is the capacitor that couples uh, to the audio output tube this is the noise suppression capacitor across the coil the output transformer coil audio output transformer coil um, these are all just bypass capacitors, low voltage stuff. Uh, these are AVC filtering. I did get this one. This is like a tone capacitor on a tap of the volume control. And since I got a lot of these uh, 0, 0, 033s, I doubled up. And when I say I got a lot, there's a couple thousand in here. So... Uh, more capacitors equal more flavor. I did really kind of get lost in this. There are, I think, three or four capacitors inside the vibrator box. We will get to that in part two when we build the solid state vibrator. Like I said, I want to make that a separate video because... Um, that's a topic that needs to be covered because I had to do hours and hours of searching to come up with a schematic that appears like uh, it'll work. So we'll get into that in part two. Next thing to do here is uh, power this thing back up and align it. We are going to do the filter capacitor. We'll do that in part two. Okay, so I'm keeping this vibrator supply for part two. So we'll power it up, we'll make sure everything seems legit here, and then we will uh, trinco-crinculate. So we'll align it next. Make sure, get it dialed in, see how good it performs. This is what we're going to attempt. We're going to take a regular filament supply out of a TV like 6.3 volts and we're just going to feed it into one winding here. So this from here to here would be I guess 12.6. This would be 6.3 and 6.3. So we're going to just connect one side of the filament output of a TV transformer to here, the other side to here. This is a gas filled low loss rectifier so we should have approximately 200 and something volts and then I want to align this thing and the IF is 260 so if we go to the alignment instructions uh, let's see here all nice 
nice to do on the computer, yes. So here's the alignment instructions. Wow, that's what it looked like when it was new. When it still had chrome on it. Um, so 0.1 microfarad high side for the antenna receptacle. Um, 260 slugs in all the way across voice coil. We're just going to peak peak these for maximum and these these capacitor tuned IF cans they always seem to be off way off but they don't develop silver mica disease that doesn't mean they can't fail and then on this one where they want you to adjust they want you to adjust the three uh, tuning slugs I think those are too rusted in place to screw with Slugs completely out. I think what we do is we just sort of adjust these A5, 6, and 7. We just sort of adjust those in the middle of the band for best performance. Let's see here. A7 is a tuning, a tunable capacitor. A5, yeah, so we just adjust these tuning capacitors and leave these slugs alone. Just not going to risk this rusty crap. So here's our big color TV transformer, and we're just going to use the filament output on this. And I'm going to feed it. You see, I marked it down there VV and positive. So I'd like to try and find something that would fit in there. And then we'll align these trimmers right here. And then you see how these slugs are adjustable? Like on Zenith. But I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to mess with those, I don't think. After all, will the radio actually ever get used? And ideally, I should have the bottom on it while I do this, the metal bottom. Alright, I kind of think I got it here. So let's put 6.3 volts on this thing. And I got a meter here on the bottom. Well, we got a long way to go up to 200. Is this a stupid capacitor reforming again? Probably re destroying the tube this time. So let it sit for a little bit. Yeah, something weird is going on. It doesn't. Something weird's going on here. Um, I don't know if this rectifier diode is bad. It sure got hot. It, it's hot as hell. And I don't think a gas-filled rectifier is supposed to get hot. Um, but it, it starts squealing and... It's not happy. I'm trying to find a tube tester that'll test this 0Z4. I don't know, maybe I'm not looking this up right, but all of these tube testers start with 1. Okay, here we go. This, this boy will do it. Where the big girl's at. 0Z4. Now just to figure out how to set all this crap up. And look at this, it has its own specific button to push just for this tube, and it's bad. Okay, so here we go. Well, I probably burned it up. Well, 
Well, that's not good. It's weird. If I press the test button and rub my fingers over the outside of the tube, I can feel like a shock. You know, I can feel like 60 hertz vibration, like it's the outside of the tube is hot, which is what it was doing in the set. Something's up with this tube. Sort of feel like the solution with this is just to take this, gut it out, and build a solid state one to go in there. I wonder if the pinout is the same as a 5U4, because I already have solid state ones built for a 5U4. And I'd just be tempted, since we're going to go with a solid state vibrator, just to get rid of the tube altogether and go with two diodes underneath. Um, yeah, there's no reason to have the, the non-heated tube in there. It's, if you're gonna, we're already modifying the thing with solid state vibrator, so who cares if, you know. So, uh, let me see if it's the same as a 5U4, because I already have the 5U4 built. Well, on the 5U4, it looks like the plate is 4, pin 4 and 6. And the cathode is 8 and 2. On the 0Z4, it's 3 and 5 and 8. So, yeah, I'm going to have to build one. No problem. What we do is we just... this. I think this was a 6SN7. Just kind of... Treat it like an egg there. And then what we need to do is we need to... Gut, gut it out. Mm, more asbestos, more asbestos, more asbestos. There we go. These are just two 1N4007 diodes. Real easy to make these, but keep in mind when you do this, it's going to crank the B plus voltage up much higher because. Where the tube had, a, I, I think the spec sheet said the tube had a drop of like 20 to 30 volts. These have a drop of like 1 volt. So, yeah. This is, we're probably going to have to mo modify the vibrator to drop the voltage down to something reasonable. Alright, let's see what happens here. Jeez. Now... With the solid state rectifier, remember it started at like 100 volts and then it was creeping up. Slowly now with the solid state rectifier, it went straight up to 360 volts. With just 6 volts here on the half of the transformer like I originally discussed. So let me heat the filaments up. Or let me do this. Uh, we'll do this. Okay, put power there, then we'll put power here. 371 volts. wonder what that is, a 250 volt capacitor? Should get the party cranked up. Yeah, that zero's zero Z4. Ooh. In my opinion, right now it's still time to buy, and if you're not buying, it's time to hold. Oh yes. But it's certainly not time for us to sell out because the pandemic's got shaky. Hang in there. There's going to be a crypto summer coming very, very soon. Ooh, a crypto and summer. That, you know, when we see a big crash like an FTX crash, which has been advertised on national TV and the uh, yes. the FTX. So our our uh, B plus is way too high now. Three hundred and sixty? Way too high. Now I got to figure out how to get that down. It's way too high. This is a one ohm resistor and it gets us right to 220 volts. It's pretty good with no antenna. Trust and you don't try to. 
In fact, that's incredible with no antenna. Okay. All right, 260, tuning slugs all the way in. One, two, three, four, just for maximum. All right, tuning slugs all the way in. God, the sensitivity is just off the chain with this thing. That's what I expected, though. Frequency, two, six, no, 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 no. Two, six, zero kilohertz, some AM modulation, some power here. Okay. Do this in all one take. Of course, they're going to be frozen. Jeez. Like I said, these are always way off. God, the sensitivity now is just way out of control. Okay, let's get this out of the... Oh yeah. Ooh, baby is that hot. Let's see, let's put a little antenna on it. Oops. In LA County has climbed by a little over a penny this time to almost 449 a gallon. And the latest upticks are about two cents in most other areas, including Orange County, where the new average stands at about 441 a gallon. The Auto Club blames the recent increases on lower gas inventories and reduced production levels at many California refineries. Who was on the list for President Biden? 
story in just a couple of de que entendamos que la cicatriz pues eh wonder if it'll get that this is a test lady. I think this is the oscillator, right? I don't even know if that's still on the air anymore. Should be right above this station. Yeah, maybe it's not on the air anymore. Huh. Wow, that's impressive to get LA oldies that strong with with a one foot wire antenna. So the way I adjusted this was I took the antenna wire off and I this is the oscillator and I slowly adjusted this while tracking this in and out for a peak. So that that sort of gets the oscillator lined up with the RF and front end. Um, so I, I, I think because you're supposed to be able to turn these and move these. It's going to come down in years for it to come down, but the chief threat to the American economy over the long haul is going to be an economy that does not grow at the pace of inflation, even if inflation. Well, I said, your words about promiscuity ring so true. When I first married my wife, I had regrets I hadn't slept with more women before settling down. Twelve years later, that feeling... The, like this is hurt. in the house with no antenna on the radio. Yeah, it's not shielded. And probably when I get the, the bottom, we should probably realign it. But, I mean, this is incredible how sensitive this is. This is like a this is like an all American five with a front end, an RF amp. Really low. I think people, every dude has flights of fancy about this sort of stuff, but that's not the same thing as saying I have like deep personal regrets that I didn't engage in this promiscuous behavior and enmesh myself in a bunch of entanglements that were complicated emotionally and and gave me baggage that I then had to carry into my. So tube sockets are good. Way to live your life. It just is not. I'm not going to pretend that it is, even for people who say that it is. I'm judgmental enough to believe that many people make bad decisions, and those decisions are bad for them even when they don't realize that those decisions are bad for them. Well, more duh. More of this in just one second. First, I wanted to let you know, if you really enjoy the Ben Shapiro Show... And yes, yes, just just, just uh, support our sponsor. Today, we'd, we'd like to... Hey, We'd Ball like here. to introduce you to our friend, Kroegi Spoimler Diborbalizer. If you're having problems with your decollete, you should... Say, it certainly can. Luckily, there is hope, and a whole lot of fun to be had at the left's expense. Come. Okay, let me do this. I'm going to measure the current uh, on the 6 volt side. So our AC amps, now keep in mind this is a clean sine wave coming out of this off the line. The AC amps going into the vibrator transformer in order to get 220 volts B plus, just say 3 amps. So 3 amps on the B plus and the FETs should be able to the FETs and the vibrator should be able to handle that no problem. I'll be curious to do this. Let me take let me shut the filaments off. 
and let's see what the what it goes down to because that'll take the load off of it can't do this for long because now the the B plus is going to skyrocket on this poor capacitor that's going to get replaced wow that's a wow we're blowing two-thirds of the power off just in heat if the tubes are cool there shouldn't be any load on it two-thirds of the power boy the WEF would not approve of this I think this is going to lower the ESG score of this radio anyway that's going to be part one in part two we'll do the solid state vibrator and then maybe we'll take this out to the desert and see how it performs I'm happy to report this vibrator circuit works very well. Uh, I'm going to hook it up here and I'll make a second more comprehensive video on this. So that's 6 volts. And it's a little bit too hot so we're going to have to add some resistor, uh, some diodes. It talks about adding diodes here to lower the... secondary voltage I'm Mike Simpson and I'm Vicki Moore well we're getting there oh, with this storm let's get the lay on how much longer it's going to be with us when we get the break from our weather channel meteorologist Scott Lymore Thank you, Vicki. Encouraged by what we're seeing here, the cold front responsible for all our big weather today is making good progress through Southern California. And My antenna fell off. I could even see a little sunshine break through before the day is done. We'll definitely see the sunshine back tomorrow, the weekend. So the humming is because of my location. It's not that thing. Plus that thing is not even shielded like it needs to be. It appears that that thing is pretty quiet. Oh, and these are, I used, these are counterfeit IRFZ46. They don't even get warm. And I'm pulling about 5 amps here. So I'll make a more comprehensive video part 2 on this for those who are interested in uh, the vibrator substitute. Solid state vibrator substitute.